talking with tones too. We're talking with tones too. We're talking, 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 talking with tones too. We're talking with tones too. We're talking with tones too. We're talking, 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 talking with tones too. Hey everybody, and thank you for listening to Talking with Tones Tube, where we discuss regular topics for regular people. So the topic for today is how the smartphone changed the world. So I know that's a big one, y'all. I could probably go on for days about this one. It's kind of a big topic because smartphone has most certainly changed the world for kids, for adults, for everybody. Let's go way back to the creation of social media, right? So we kind of had the first big thing that came out was Napster, where you could basically share music and music sharing. And I know there was a lot of controversy about utilizing Napster. And that was a social media thing where you could share music and sharing it amongst peers is what they called it. Basically getting music for free. So I'm sure that definitely hindered the music industry. And it was, I would say, the beginning of social media. It also um, led to stuff like MySpace. MySpace was kind of the beginnings of Facebook, which basically you could post stuff about yourself. You could post like a logo and things like that and put an about you and things like that. So that's what MySpace was. So MySpace was kind of before Facebook. And then, of course, Facebook became a thing. Now, the reason why I'm talking about social media first is because the smartphone and social media pretty much is intertwined. I would be remiss if I did not mention social media. Now, obviously, a long time ago when I was a kid, we used to have uh, cartoons and commercials and movies where people walked around with a computer in their pocket or like they could talk to people and actually see them and it was like a hologram kind of thing. So that kind of stuff was pretty neat. And of course, anybody watching it would say, wow, that's pretty awesome. Can't wait for that to be a thing. Can't wait for that to be real. That's the future. That's science fiction. That's uh, year 2000 type stuff, whatever you want to call it. There came a time when you could walk around with a computer in your pocket called the smartphone. Now, I had a Motorola. I think it was a Razor, I think. Um, I actually had this sandwich looking thing. It was some some sort of Android device where it basically folded and, and you had a little keyboard and you can text and share pictures and things like that. So I had like, you know, that was the beginning of a smartphone for me. I do remember at the time, I actually, when I first started using this thing, I actually just wanted to throw it against the wall because just to do the simple stuff, like, hey, I want to call somebody was pretty complicated. And I wasn't used to it at the time and I was going through some at the time. So getting that, I wanted to throw it against the wall. That being said, you know, it was um, eventually eventually led to the iPhone. And I, I think the iPhone was out when I had this sandwich phone. I forgot what it's called. It was like a Motorola, some sort of Q keyboard thing. And it was pretty cool because it opened up and folded like a computer type thing. So at the time it was cool. But now if you looked at it, it would be like this ancient ridiculously looking thing. That's what I started using. And I wanted to, you know, text messages started becoming a thing. And it was more like... Just an update. Hey, this or hey, that I'll meet you at this time or this is the reason for this for that. So basic stuff, you know, just trying to get a point across text messages. Right. And that was it. It wasn't really any more complicated than that. Once the iPhone came out, I was like, wow, you know, like I actually um, one of my ex-girlfriends had this and I looked at it and it was a completely user friendly thing, not like the thing that I had. I think I had a razor after my Q keyboard thing. And I would say the iPhone was a legendary invention. It was just something that when I saw it, I was just like, holy, I got to have one of those. But they were too expensive. I couldn't touch it at the time. It took me a while to actually get an iPhone. Now I was used to Android. Um, I really did like the customization with Android. You can know, you could use photos and, you know, do whatever you got to do for um, whatever you want to do. So the customization was nice. I know that iPhone had a lot of restrictions for their device. Once I got my hands on one and started using it, I was like, wow, this is super user friendly. The going on the internet part of it was pretty easy. You know, you could zoom in and click on buttons and stuff like that. And my phone just didn't do that. So when I started using uh, the iPhone, I was like, wow, I got to have an iPhone. And then I got an iPhone. So once I got an iPhone, it was pretty much over. And I have to say social media was definitely awesome in the beginning. When Facebook was cool, I liked the fact that, you know, on the advertising, it was catered to me. 
In a way, in a way I didn't, because it meant spending more money on stuff that was interesting to me. It was cool to share with friends. It was cool to post pics. I was into graffiti at the time, and I was, you know, a graffiti artist, so I was sharing some of my graffiti stuff, and it was totally awesome. You know, it was a cool thing. And then your aunt's best friend's beautician's dog got on it, and I don't know, it became not as cool. Now, don't get me wrong, Facebook is definitely good for what it is. I definitely adore it for that. I think it's perfect to keep in touch with people. It's great to see what's going on in people's lives. It's just, I don't like to air my business necessarily to everyone. And I don't know, uh, this idea where life is perfect was kind of weird to me because life is not perfect. And I, I guess I'm more of a real genuine kind of person. Not to say I'm not going to post something if I'm in a schmancy place. Of course, I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I just felt like people kind of got carried away with the whole my life is luxurious kind of thing. So I don't know. I just kind of strayed away from Facebook. And, you know, it was a big time eater. And I think that's the biggest kind of topic within this that we can discuss as far as it relates to social media. There's people that are going on social media and just it, it just devours your time. It gobbles up your time. Don't get me wrong. You're getting something from it. You're getting info. You're getting entertainment. You're getting toast too. So we got to include that too. Social media is, is an awesome thing, but it's got to be a balance, right y'all? There's got to be a balance in your life. Not to mention social media, you know, the phone made it so easy to just go on social media and stare at the damn screen all day. So this is where I, I have to take a minute to talk about this. Staring at the screen all day. I'm glad they came up with things like um, screen time and all that sort of thing where you can actually kind of prevent yourself from staring at the screen all day. And don't get me wrong, you could find out a lot of super awesome stuff. You know, it's the, the, the amount of information is endless. It's infinity information. I love it. Web became a thing. Smartphone became a thing. You can look up anything. It's just, you know, before this stuff was the everyday, this was all big news and awesome big stuff. Now, I know all y'all kids out there are probably like, what the? Tony, you're ancient. How old are you, Tony? I don't know. I'm not that old, but I think I said I was 46 years young on one of my apps. And actually, guess whose birthday it is this month, but that's beside the point. So Jesus, I'm going to be 47. Holy So getting back into the whole social media aspect of it. Now, everybody knows your business. You're living this awesome, luxurious life. Everything is perfect in your life on social media. In real life, I would say it's not perfect, right, y'all? So this is a vast can of worms that I've opened up here. You know what I'm saying? This is a Pandora's box. There's only so much I can cover, but there's definitely a couple of things that I wanted to mention as it relates to the smartphone and social media. I love having a smartphone as I turn my phone the other direction, so if I get any notifications, it doesn't in interrupt my train of thought. I love the smartphone just as much as the next guy. I probably stare at my phone just as much as the next guy. I try not to. I have to say, when the smartphone came out, I didn't mind waiting online in the supermarket. All of a sudden, waiting online at the supermarket wasn't a hassle. It wasn't a mission. I just stared at my phone and I didn't care about waiting online in the supermarket. I will definitely say that that was a cool thing. Not sure if that is um, significant, but I would say I didn't mind waiting online because when you're waiting online, it's like, what the f are you supposed to do, right? Um, but having a smartphone kind of changed that. It wasn't a big deal to wait online at the supermarket anymore. So I definitely did like that. One thing led to another, guys. So, you know, we started with Napster, okay? We talked about that that music file sharing, okay? Then we talked about MySpace. Then we talked about Facebook. Then I would say Instagram was next. We could talk about Facebook all day. I definitely think some of these Pandora's boxes that I'm opening, I need to have other episodes on some of the stuff, but I'm trying to stick to the topic at hand. So Instagram, I would say, is the next one that was intertwined into the whole smartphone social media invention, right? So I liked Instagram because I'm an artist, okay? And I'm, I'm an artist at heart. Now, I like the fact that people on Instagram, in the beginning anyway, only posted super photography type pictures. Like if you took the greatest shot on your phone, that's what you posted on Instagram. The best picture you took when you went wherever is the picture you posted on Instagram. 
So Instagram was filled up with artsy, artistic, really great quality shots, great perspectives, all that stuff. It wasn't like Facebook where you just saw family members and stuff like that. Not dissing family members. Super grateful. I'm super grateful that I can see my family. I'm super grateful that they can see me. I think it's an amazing invention. But I was more about the artistic, the artsy stuff. That's what I was more into. So I, I found myself more on Instagram than Facebook. Facebook is also an awesome way to keep in touch with old school friends from the old neighborhood, right? I used to live in Queens. Great to keep in touch with some of my Queens heads. Then I moved to Long Island. It was great to see some of my Long Island heads too. I am not on Facebook. I mean Facebook that much. You know, there's also privacy stuff, you know, that you got to question. I mean, they say it's private, but y'all know that's not real. Anything with an eyeball video camera probably knows your business. That's probably half of the reason why they invented a smartphone. And I don't want to open up that can of worms, but, you know, there's a whole controversy and a whole thing we could get into about that. I don't know if I want to go down that rabbit hole because these smart TVs, smartphones, awesome technology, of course you want it. Of course you want it. I want it, but I don't want everybody to know my business. But here we are, and it's the year 2023, and we're talking about the beginning, right? So Instagram was the next big one, and playing games was cool, Candy Crush, all that stuff, you know? And I wasn't big on that sort of thing, but I did like my Tetris. I did like my Tetris on the smartphone, so I played that. I played a couple other ones, similar to Tetris. It was a good time waster. You waiting in the doctor's office? No worries, I got my smartphone. Then the iPad came out. I had to have one of those because it was basically your smartphone, but big, you know? So you could see it bigger and all that sort of thing. So iPads became big, and all of a sudden, there were apps for everything. All of a sudden, every single business found a way to get their business in the palm of your hands. I'm sure some of these businesses were just sitting around thinking it was the world was their oyster. As long as you can afford to get an app and get on that smartphone, everybody has one now, had one at the time when iPhones became big. Jesus, when did iPhones become big? Hey Siri, when did iPhones become very popular? Okay, I found this on the web for when did iPhones become very popular. Check it out. Okay, so Siri is telling me that 2007 is when iPhones were invented or created or came out or whatever. So 16 years ago is when iPhones became super popular, when iPhones became a thing. Walking around with that computer in the palm of your hands was awesome. Everybody wanted to, everybody wanted to do it. It was just cool. We just wanted to walk around with that computer in our pocket that pretty much does everything. It replaced our watch. It replaced our alarm clock. What else do phones do? It replaced our flashlights. You don't need a dictionary anymore. It's all in there. You need dictionary? Remember those people that used to come around your house and try to sell you a Webster's full volume set of dictionary? You don't need that no more. You got Wikipedia. You got Google. So you got all these web browsers. So I would say the web and how big the web became coincided with smartphones. Let's talk a little bit about the web. They used it as Morse code in the military. And that's how eventually they ended up becoming in the internet. So I'm not going to get too deep into that, but that's how the internet became a thing. The World Wide Web. Once pictures were able to be shared on the World Wide Web, it was over. Then videos became a thing. Videos became shared and YouTube became a thing. Netflix became a thing. We talked about that one last time. A lot of technology stuff going on from that point on. You know, year 2000s, early 2000s, a lot of technology stuff happened. So one more thing I got to mention, I feel like this is something, the creation of the smartphone, how it changed the world is something that I'm going to have to continue uh, on another episode, but I wanted to touch upon a few of those topics. Now, the other thing I want to mention before we wrap up this topic is I wanted to get back into these businesses were trying to come up with reasons to have their business on your smartphone. What do I mean by that? I mean... Food companies, clothing companies, any company that wants to sell anything had to figure out a way to get on your smartphone, whether it was an app, whether it was Instagram, whether it was Facebook. They loved it because on these social media stuff, you had your, your age, you had your age group, you had your interests. 
on Facebook, on Instagram. They know what you like based off the pages you follow. So it's an alley for the companies because they send you, they send me a good example. I love my baseball caps, snapbacks nowadays because I, I kept buying fitted hats. I go to wear them and I can't even put them on because my head's bigger and my hat doesn't fit. So snapbacks only now. Customized snapbacks popped up on my Instagram feed. Customized snapbacks. And these are the type of hats that I like. And I was just like, oh, that's cool. I was like, wow, that would be, you know, customized uh, hat would be dope for my channel. When I saw that, I was like, I have to have it. I have to have it. For my Tones Tube videos. For my Tones Tube podcast. And the hats were legit. The quality was good. And I customized a couple of hats. But anyway, that's the sort of thing, you know, they, they hit my market. My age group, they know I like hats. They know I like New Era because I buy Yankee caps. And uh, these companies are selling my information. Uh, get this, get this mother. He'll buy it. He bought the other one. So there is no such thing as privacy out there. I know there's settings and stuff on your phone, but I think it's a bunch of bull. You have to have the audacity to not buy if you don't have the money. <laughs> Which anyway, you know, I fall down the rabbit hole of buying a lot of... So... That's okay. I got a channel. I got to open boxes and show y'all what's good about these features and benefits and everything. But going back to what we were talking about, companies were looking for reasons to, looking for ways to get their business in the palm of your hands on the phone. Uber, all those Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, just trying to figure out a way. You can order it on your phone. A smartphone, the smartphone is so big, we have got to get our company on your phone so you can order more of our food. Plain and simple. Because people were doing everything on their phone. Why would you have to call Domino's Pizza if there's an app and you could just click a few buttons? But, you know, the thing that happens with this is then all of a sudden people don't know how to talk to people. And that's my biggest gripe. That brings me back to the, what I was trying to say before when I got, you know, my train of thought interrupted me. Where these kids have no clue how to socialize. When I was a kid, you got bullied in school. You had to figure it out. Of course it was a hit against your self-esteem. Of course you went through some... But that's part of growing up. It just turned everybody into super sensitive human beings. Super sensitive. Everybody's so sensitive. You can't say nothing to no one about anything. You can't even make a joke anymore. When I was a kid, you had to get over it, man. Get over it. Everybody's so darn sensitive. You got to vent it on Twitter. You got to vent it on all these social media stuff. Chill out, y'all. Stuff is not that serious all the time. Chill out, y'all. Why, Why so, so serious? serious? You know, everybody's going after everybody. It's just, it's creating more chaos for the world. It's making your kids lose their self-esteem. You know, in school, I just had to go to school and deal with it. You got to deal with it on social media now, y'all. These poor kids. Jesus. And, they, you know, they, the confidence they have is based on the likes that they get on Facebook and Instagram. You got 12-year-old girls wiggling their asses around. I don't get it. It's what the smartphone and social media has turned our world to. I feel bad for these kids. I feel bad. You know, they're growing up and their confidence and how they feel about themselves is how many likes they got last night on the thing they posted. How f***ed up is that? You know, if you're a girl, you got to wear next to nothing clothing and be on social media to get recognized. And that's not cool. Females, little girls should get recognized for how smart they are. They should be intellectual. They should talk. There should be more of that stuff. And less of, uh, what's it called? Twerking. Less of twerking on Instagram. Jeez, it's just, it's really bad out there, y'all. It's flooded with just sex. Sex sells. I totally get it. But it's just wrong that our world has turned into a different place. And I am scared for the kids. I'm scared for the kids. I heard Steve Jobs and Bill Gates didn't even let their kids touch a tablet. And there's a reason for that. Welcome to another edition of a Tones Tube Tantrum, Tantrum, Tantrum. A Tones Tube Tantrum, Tantrum, Tantrum. 
opposed to tantrum, tantrum, tantrum. We're turning into sheep, we're turning into lambs, walking into the slaughter. You know, opens up a whole nother can of worms. Whole nother can of worms as it relates to politics and Illuminati and all this crazy underground stuff we can get into, conspiracy theories and all that. So, I'm not going to get into that. But basically, somebody's controlling us, and it starts with the smartphone. Whole nother can of worms. But it definitely has changed the world, guys. Some for the better, some not. Just FYI, guys, I will probably elaborate a little bit more on this topic on another episode, and it'll be a subtopic or something, or I'll make um, social media a topic. But I did, you know, you, you can't talk about how awesome the smartphone is and all the awesome things that a smartphone does without mentioning social media because the social media and the smartphone is intertwined. You know, yeah, it's great that you can order on any store, any company, and they got Instacart now, you can shop. You know, it, it is so many cool things you can do on the phone, and I'm glad they invented that stuff because it's convenience but you, you got to pay for it i love the fact that i don't have to go shopping anymore going back to waiting in line i don't have to wait in line i'm home in my pjs telling the shopper what to get because they don't have it in stock or hopefully i don't know so nowadays the instacart shopper i have basically they don't even take a picture they sometimes replace the item sometimes they just refund it i don't know but i complain to instacart because i'm like yo i mean when a certain thing initiates that shopping on Instacart, like if you need Italian bread for sausage and peppers, I can't have sausage and peppers without Italian bread. So if, if I'm ordering Italian bread and these mo just bring me, you know, some sort of white bread hero that they think is Italian bread, I can't do it. it makes me have to go to the store and defeats the whole purpose of shopping on Instacart. But anyway, that's my little rant there. So you can do everything on your smartphone. I love the fact that you can, but it's got to be well balanced. You, everything is a balance in life, guys. Kids, you too. Everything's a balance in life. Stop looking at Instagram all day. You don't have to, okay? Look at it a little bit, sure, but not all day. You got other things to do. Be productive. Go outside. Look at the sun. Play wiffle ball. I used to play stoop ball. Play stoop ball. You probably don't know what that is. But anyway, do something outdoors, y'all. Stop staring at your phone. God, I, I, I gotta stop. Let's get into the episode album to, to reflect, reflect on. on. Before I keep talking about smartphone and social media. The episode album to reflect on is De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising. So just want to take a second to recognize a pioneer in hip-hop music. De La Soul co-founder David Jolasur, a.k.a. True Goy the Dove, otherwise known as Plug 2. To me, De La Soul, when I was a kid, was like something you never heard of. I would say they invented conscious hip-hop, conscious rap, and I know they were cool with and led to because they were in the same kind of crowd. They were in the same posse, the Native Tongues. You know, uh, Dress of Black Sheep was in there too, you know, Black Sheep. And uh, we also had Tribe Cold Quest. So Tribe Cold Quest is epic legendary group, and De La Soul kind of was before them. So, De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising was the first album they came out with, 1989. So, late 80s, early 90s, De La Soul came out with Three Feet High and Rising. Now, this album reminded me of when I used to go to high school of art and design, and my brother-in-law used to drive me there. He used to, it used to be like a drive on the Great American Screen Machine. We always left the house with under an hour to get to High School of Art and Design on Lexington Avenue and 53rd, and I lived in Queens, and somehow we always got there on time. So John, my brother-in-law, was listening to this song, and I just have so many memories in the car in his Riviera, listening to Three Feet High and Rising. So I am going to, you know, I have to, I have to take a second to recognize how legendary and epic De La Soul has been to hip-hop. Without De La Soul, conscious rap would never be a thing. They actually also come from Long Island, which is pretty cool. But Plug 2, may he rest in peace, was co-founder. They have a bunch of albums. To me, every single album they have is great. It's not a group that you think of going back and listening to often. But when I heard he passed, I just started playing their songs again. And I was like, wow, these guys are legendary. They are legendary, man. And they helped create hip-hop. Real hip-hop, anyway. But... 
talking a little bit about three feet high and rising so many bangers so many tracks on that one that it's just an amazing album even the intros do i actually think this is the first time that i heard skits and intros on an album which um you know they do a lot of game show stuff and the skits and intros were pretty epic on this album and funny the magic number Great production on there. Um, you know, they got the intro, Three Feet High and Rising, Magic Number, Change and Speak, Cool Breeze on the Rocks, Can You Keep a Secret, Jennifer Taught Me, Derwin's Revenge, Ghetto Thang, Transmitting Live from Mars, I Know, featuring Otis Redding, Take It Off, A Little Bit of Soap, Tread Water, Potholes in My Lawn, Say No Go, Do As De La Does, Plug Tune In, De La Orgy, Buddy, Legendary song right there, y'all. Jungle Brothers was on there. Q-Tip was on there. I think Modi Love was on there, too. Description, me, myself, and I. This is a recording for living in a full time, and I can do anything. So, like, guys, this is 23 songs. When people that made music used to actually make tracks, and don't get me wrong, some of this stuff is skits and intros, but 23 tracks on here, y'all. So, hard to pick a song... It's hard to pick just one song. Magic numbers are going. So let's do that one for listening action. All right, y'all. So this is part of the show where we go listening, listening, listening. Listen, action, 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 action. Oh, magic number. Uh, uh, uh. Unless your name's Brewster, cause Brewster is magic number. Parents are dope, but it's magic in the air. Listen, 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 listen. Stop looking at the same phrases on the stairs and don't get offended while Mace Dosi does your daughter. A dry camera roll system is now set. Fly around the floor under the stage. Woo! Woo! What a beat. Listen, listen, listen. Action, action, action. So we did the magic number for our listening action. I love you, Dale Soul. Thank you for being a part of hip hop. So many good albums, so many good songs. If you have not listened to Three Feet High and Rising by De La Soul, you're lost. Show that I am watching. So the show that I am watching is The Wu-Tang Clan, an American saga on the Hulu streaming service. Now, Hulu, in my opinion, doesn't have a lot of exclusive awesomeness shows. But guys, this Wu-Tang Clan show is pretty awesome. Wu-Tang, an American saga is an American biographical drama streaming television series created by the RZA and Alex C., which premiered on September 4, 2019 on Hulu. The show portrays a fictionalized account of the formation of the Wu-Tang Clan. In January 2020, the series was renewed for a second season, which premiered on September 8, 2021. In November 2021, the series was renewed for a third and final season, which premiered on February 15, 2023. So this is the final season. Now, I have to be honest. I didn't know, you know what to expect from this show. I think Hulu's great for the for the shows that it has on it that you could go back and watch whatever you want. However, I don't think they have this great exclusive programming. But this one is not to be missed, y'all. If you have not seen the Wu-Tang show, you lost. So, that Wu-Tang show is pretty dope. I didn't know what to expect. I watched it. So interesting. So cool. Wu-Tang Clan... How they got together, how they, they, they changed the genre, changed the genre. And this kind of shows how they did it, what they did. And the RZA was definitely a step ahead of his time. The RZA definitely is a genius. No pun intended. Genius is a genius too. They're all freaking great. But a few things, the acting is great. The guys who play the Wu-Tang Clan. How do you play the Wu-Tang Clan? That's a hard pill to swallow that you have to act and be the Wu-Tang Clan. All of these actors that play the characters are great. The only one that I was like has no resemblance is the RZA. The weirdness of how he represents that RZA character is perfect. It's spot on. Sadiq Sanderson plays Ghost. Ashton Sanders plays the RZA. 
Julian Elijah Martinez is Divine Diggs. TJ Adams plays ODB. Shamik Moore plays Raekwon the Chef. Jonel Young plays the Genius. Dave East plays Method Man. Marcus Callender plays Power Grant. Damani D. Cease plays You God. Oyota Udi plays Rebel. Super interesting. I really wish they were doing more than three seasons. I love this show. Love it. And, um, you know, this season is good. Gets into a little bit of more of the BS. The, the, the complicated stuff. You know, they just kind of became Wu-Tang. They just kind of got put on. They're, they're starting to become big. You know, to, to, to know that this show's ending in, in, in this season, it's, it kind of sucks because I'm sure there's more stories to tell. Such an interesting show, such great acting, and it's really a great story to see how Wu-Tang became. And um, I'm all in, man. And they, you know, they actually, the actors do uh, reenact some of the songs. They do a hell of a job. I noticed there is some, for a show that's Wu-Tang American Saga, I noticed there isn't, a lot of actual Wu-Tang music in the show. I guess that's for copyright reasons, for the um, different labels that the, um, you know, the record company labels stuff. It's probably a lot of red tape there. So some songs, like they don't really play, they don't really play a lot of legit, actual Wu-Tang music. And that's kind of weird, but they do play some of the big ones. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the, a lot of that stuff is for copyright purposes. Great show, y'all. If you haven't watched that one, you lost. So definitely watch it. Um, this season is pretty good. I, again, I can't believe that this one's going to end after the season. Such a great show. So let, so watch that one, y'all. Because Tosu says watch the Wu-Tang Clan American Side. So let's move to the next part of the show. Stuff you need to do for your well-being. Stuff you need to do for your well-being is breathe. I know, it sounds kind of crazy. I'm trying to give you all some simple little action pointers here. Breathe. And here's how to do it. Count four seconds and take a deep breath in. Go all the way down into your stomach. All the way down into your diaphragm. Go down as deep as you can go for a four count. Then hold your breath for four seconds. Hold your breath for four seconds. And then blow it out for six seconds. So that's a count of four, breathing all the way in, as far as you can go down there into your stomach. And then you're going to hold for four seconds. Hold, hold, hold for four seconds. And then you're going to blow out for six seconds. This count automatically relaxes you. All the stuff that is making you tense and, you know, your heart beating fast and stuff, this is a way to calm you down. And if you are already calm, you should do that too. Four, four, six. Do the count. Four, really deep in. Hold your breath for four. And then six, blow it out. Now, when you hit, when you do the six, blow it out, try to give an extra little push. Try to give you an extra little push out of your stomach. I'm telling you, it's therapeutic, guys therapeutic. So, so that's, that's stuff you need to try for your well-being because Tom's Hoop said so. So try it. What, what the heck, heck is on my mind today? today? What the heck is on my mind today is basically, and I know I talked a lot about it, these kids with these social media stuff, right? So I feel like there's a lot of like depression stuff out there due to this. So that really is what's kind of on my mind because I feel bad for these little tykes. You know, like I had it rough as a kid, you know, because we were in the neighborhood scraping our knees and roughing each other up. These kids have a totally different psychological warfare thing going on with this social media crap. So that is what is on my mind today. So like I know there's a lot of depression um, out there as a result of this stuff. And this is what's really bothering me. You know what I mean? So like, you know, iPhones, smartphones, social media, you know, it basically all kind of ties together. Um, I know I've gotten to a tone tube tantrum before, but like what's on my mind today is how you handle it as a parent. What can you do for your kids? Hopefully they're not, you know, catching psychological behaviors and some negative outcomes from this social media stuff. You know, um, bad enough that they got to worry about it in school. And, you know, the fact that they have to um, deal with it when they're on these social media platforms is kind of rough. So two things. I would recommend some screen time sort of thing for your kids. Doing some outdoors activities or, you know, uh, doing stuff together, video games. Just 
and I guess that can lead to a whole other thing, but, you know, less social media. And then the other thing, obviously, is getting some sort of psychiatric help. So I'm going to give you guys this number, okay? 203-661-1911, 24-hour helpline for um, kids in crisis. It's called Kids in Crisis, 24-hour helpline. The number is 203-661-1911. So for all y'all, for all y'all whippersnappers out there, you can always comment and I'll always try to help you in the tones tube comments. If you need something, I want to help you. I'm there for you, y'all. I'm there for you. Okay. So I want to, I want to say that, but there is a hotline number. If things are real deep and you need some real psychiatric doctor type help, you know what I mean? So that, that is what, what the heck, heck is, is on my mind, mind today. today. So. Let's get into the original song by Sabatone. Sabatone, What Happened to the Rappin' is our first album. So I'm going to play you another song from What Happened to the Rappin'. What Happened to the Rappin' was completed in 2003. I think we, you know, we were just trying to figure out how to make it sound better. So I actually think we were experimenting with the computer and trying to make the sound better. We didn't take a class. We didn't go to school. We were just trying to make it sound better. So I think by the time we were completely done, I would say it was 2003. And I think that's after we redid the album about two or three times, just to kind of make it sound, you know, sound quality better. We actually were done with the album way before that, but uh, we just wanted to make it sound better. And we were learning through trial and error. Chawtone was learning through trial and error to make it sound better. Um, I am going to play You Don't Know. You don't know what it's like to hear the same doo-doo. The radio, it makes me want to puke. Yeah, so kind of goes back to something I touched on last episode. Just commercial hip-hop isn't my thing. Underground is where I live. I live in the underground. I live in the cave. So... What Happened to the Rappin' 2003, You Don't Know is the name of the song. Basically, the concept is talking about commercial hip-hop. We're trying to stay true to real hip-hop, like De La Soul. We're trying to stay true to real hip-hop. At that point in time, there was a lot of other weird things going on where hip-hop started changing. Stuff like De La Soul wasn't as popular as it used to be. Or I should say, people started coming up with different stuff, making hip-hop kind of suck. So me and Charlie came out with a song. We came out with an album talking about a lot of this type of stuff. But anyway. This That's what it's all about, man. Eating, drinking, walking, talking, snoring, I wanna li 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 listen to a different type song Cause every five minutes on the radio the same shit is on Word is wrong Is that right to think rhyme is sane while his fake friend is making beats and so-called DJing? How could these rhymes even think this shit is a bomb? Right after logging off of WXLRhyme.com I think the whole concept of hip-hop is gone Because they're not even finished with the debut first song And the main concern is what outfit they're gonna put on For the video shoot the record label promised them on Saying something rough after just smoke some stuff Ayo, but at least you pretend it sound tough Sounds more to me like fluff from the cardboard gangsta persona To the Reagan or Nicker Banks calls marijuana Hey, at least he's dropping Alexis with the chrome dip rims Claiming to be real hip-hop from the ill fate to his limbs Whoa, let's not forget the gangsta look at Tim's Nor the topics he sings about in his hymns I'm a thug, you're a thug, everyone's a thug How much have you smoked, how many grades have you dug? Act like this, cause the guy who signs the check says Alright man, you have to talk, break some necks Sounds to me like the same old shit Though these cats be coming out with Hit after hit, nothing is due to our garbage nonsense Making me wanna come out with something intense Hence, I wanna hear something that's not the same Who's to say what's real or fake in this rapping game? And yet to some, it's all for the fame Do it for climate girls, money, fancy champagne Ah, uh, what do they know? May as well change the name From hip-hop to shit shot Damn, what a shame You don't know what it's like to hear The same dude The radio makes me wanna puke You don't know what it's like to hear The same dude The radio makes me wanna puke When I'm chillin' in my car with an FM station It's really not amazing, right? Who 
hip hop's blazing. Constant repetition, wishing I could write a petition. But this is your commercial dribbles for kissing, kissing. Booty butt ass, pass the toilet paper and wipe your cotta. Another case of the slaves to the dollar. Gotta be a weak soul, changing your flow for a bankroll. I'm not a hater, quick and come, quick you go. For no apparent reason, I'm feeling this the season. The flashy catchy rappies, sounding mad crappy. There has to be a factory of mutated related rhymers coming out of vaginas. Already man stylish, giving the finest iceberg lettuce with a fetish. For wearing even letters before learning their letters. Instead of learning to walk, they learn to compose. And at the age of five, they take their first live. Try to imagine the damage it's causing and what it's costing to have awesome muses that's useless and tasteless. In fact, if you really don't feel me, a racist. You don't know what it's like to hear the same dirty. The radio makes me wanna do. You don't know what it's like to hear the same dirty. The radio makes me wanna do. Underly, underly, mama, ay 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 uh-oh Man, all that whack shit's got to go I have to really admit that I ain't all that But someone's gotta stop the twisted fader rap Just cause I don't see terms like Doug fuck a bitch Push style on my wet and have ice on my wrist Might as well, what the heck? Nah, I'd lose my own respect You heard that new joint on the radio by so-and-so? Nah, the TD shit's gotta go But that shit is so hot, and I'm thinking it's not you brothers just repeat the word on the streets While cats be rolling by bumping the same shit in their jeeps It's not necessarily fat, just a guy on his track Happens to be black on a song that's whack And runs on the radio, more than a track star's lifetime By the way, wannabes, that's just not real rhyme Shake that ass, but shut it off When I listen at them, I wanna throw up and cough When the song is even, I'm more air than I breathe Rap might as well have AIDS or some kind of disease And if you're not feeling this, forget the racist Smash the CD tape and put on a radio station You don't know what it's like to hear the same dude The radio makes me wanna do You don't know what it's like to hear the same dude The radio makes me wanna do You don't know what it's like to hear the same dude The radio makes me wanna do Wow, that's one of my favorite ones, y'all. Not only did me and Char Cyber, Cyber Tone, my man Char saw me get paid on that one, but it's just, you know, that's from the heart. That was a deep one because we felt so strongly about it, you know what I'm saying? So thank you for listening to our track. I hope you liked it. It's, it's you know, for me, it's always been more about the realness in hip-hop, you know, being real and genuine, not the... The, the fancy cars and the big chains and the champagne and ladies with big boobs and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, live life and be good and have fun with life and, and incorporate that in your music. You know? I don't know, man. It just got pretty carried away. But anyway, we thank you for listening to that one. And we thank you for listening to Talking with Toad Soup, where we discuss regular topics for regular people. Thank you for watching episode two of Talking with Tones Tube, y'all. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to follow if you're listening to it on audio. Hope you all liking the show so far. Make sure you all share with your friends so we can talk about some topics and um, discuss some hip hop music, Star Wars and Sky Fi and smartphones and all that kind of tech and crap. So, We'll see you next time, guys. We thank you for listening to Talking with Tones Tube, where we discuss regular topics for regular people. We'll see you next time on episode three. See you next time, guys. Talking with Tones Tube. We're talking with Tones Tube. We're talking, 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 talking with Tones Tube.